Welcome to Das Geek. So I'm very excited about this video because I learned something that was pretty cool in macOS Catalina today. And it's something that I initially completely and entirely ignored. And that something cool is known as mission control. So the reason why the desktop looks like a disaster right now is because, well, this is the reality of our work. Maybe it's Telegram instead of five browsers here, or you don't have the app store, but you've got Zoom or some other application that you're using and you've got your IDE and a word processor and other stuff that you have open. How do you manage all these windows? Well, you could get six monitors is one way, but maybe you're on a laptop or maybe even with six monitors, you still want some organization to how your workspaces are laid out. Maybe you want one workspace that just focuses on browsing the web, doing YouTube, Netflix, that type of stuff. You want one workspace that's social media. That way you can stay focused on your job. And that's where mission control comes in. So when I first saw this, I removed it out of the dock because I was like, okay, yeah, I didn't look up here at the top. This is the important piece here up here at the top. And once you, you know, reveal your mouse over that, you get to see more. If you have the trackpad, this little device right here, you can also do gestures to get to mission control. So if you are using a laptop, or in this case, it's a desktop, but if I just take three fingers and go up, you can see that reveals mission control as well. And this kind of organizes my windows, as you can see, so I can see all of the windows that I have here in a layout, so I know what's open on this. So that's the first part. But the second part is we want to organize this mess here. So I can go up and I can click on a plus sign and I can add additional workspaces. And now I can say, well, this app store stuff I want on desktop five and this DuckDuckGo window I want on desktop four and Visual Studio Code I want on desktop three. And I'm just going to leave this one as is. So now if I take my three fingers and I swipe, I can go between the different workspaces, get the work that I need to done here, maybe download an app and then go back here and use my Visual Studio Code. But I can also go back up and you know, I could rearrange these windows because maybe I want Visual Studio Code first because I really need to get to my coding and I want the app next because I want to see when that gets done downloading. And that is some of the features of this. But if you don't have the gesture, that's okay too because you can do keyboard shortcuts here. What we're going to do is hit Control Up and you can see that's going to bring up Mission Control. So I have, again, my different desktops here. I can also do Control and to the right here or can do control into the left. And that allows me to move workspaces here. And the other way that you can create workspaces is simply by full screening an app. As soon as you make an app full screen, this now becomes its own workspace automatically. I don't have to move it or drag it anywhere. And you could see that it created its own section just for code. So it kind of recognized that Visual Studio was a coding application and named that section code there. And I could do the same thing with some of these other workspaces. So let's get into our preferences because you know you want to do some tweaking. Maybe you don't like the control button there as your option. Of course, we also have F6, which is show desktop as an option, but you can't see anything because everything's already closed here. So to do that, we're gonna hit the command and space bar. We're gonna look open up system preferences here. And once we're in system preferences, we're going to go to mission control. And now you can see we have some options here to manage. So automatically rearrange spaces based on the most recent use. You can, when switching to an application, switch to a space with open windows for that application. Group windows by application. Display have separate spaces. Displays have separate spaces. So if you have multiple displays, they would have separate spaces to control. You can also, of course, add additional shortcuts. So if you don't want the control up arrow for mission control, you can make that something different. If you want your show desktop, you can make that something different. We can also set up hot corners to make it even faster. So if you don't want to have to hit a key combination, you can put mission control into a hot corner and you can also set up other lock or lock screen. I was going to say lock screen. You can also set up other hot corners as well. If you want them, I tend to find that if you have too many hot corners, they can get annoying because you can't get to what you want to. In my case, I have mission control up in the right. So if I just move my mouse up there, you can see mission control opened here and I can see all the windows that I have open and I don't want to go to desktop four, so I can just click that and do that there. And of course, if I take any of these tabs again, make it full screen, 
it's going to be its own workspace. And I'm just gonna do the control. And now that whole workspace is now named Firefox. So this is a very powerful productivity tool. As I understand it, Mission Control used to be broken up into a bunch of different tools and they combined it all into Mission Control. It's very cool and functional for people who are you know, wanting to stay productive, stay on task, and keep their windows organized because you know if you have that telegram sitting in front of you and it keeps dinging and people keep asking questions you're never going to finish that program you're working on uh, if you have youtube sitting there in front of you so if you move it to a different workspace then it allows you to stay organized and also control where your attention is going you know what's also really cool digital ocean DigitalOcean sponsors this channel. They sponsor the Destination Linux entire network of shows. It is the greatest cloud platform. I'm not just saying that. I love them before they ever became a sponsor, which made it really easy when they became a sponsor because it's like, yeah, I already love this product. I can talk about it all day long. But they offer the most simplest developer-friendly cloud platform out there. It's optimized to make managing and scaling apps easy. Intuitive API, which means it's simple to figure out just like Mac OS where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to click, what you're supposed to do without getting confused with a thousand menus of jargon and gibberish and all of that. Even being a new person, you have 2000 cloud agnostic tutorials out there to help you get started, to drop a web server, to start learning about LAMP, to start learning about Python and Django and all of these cool things, all of these cloud services out there are available for you. They also have new features like virtual private cloud in all regions free of charge, lets you create multiple private networks to isolate your workloads. Container registry is now available. Easily store and manage private container images and push images seamlessly to DigitalOcean Kubernetes. New quick install droplets have been added to DigitalOcean Marketplace as well, like Jitsi, a popular alternative to Zoom. So if you want a Jitsi server of your own that you control, manage the data, you can do that with a one-click droplet there. Minecraft server, you can set that up as well. You can get started on DigitalOcean for free. And here's the thing, they're giving everybody who hears this, if they go to do.co slash DLN, you're gonna get $100 of credit to use. Droplets cost as little as $5 per month. You're gonna have $100 for two months to play with monster sized droplets, a bunch of small droplets, whatever you want as you're learning. If you make a mistake, just delete the droplet, drop a new one and keep going. It's awesome and we thank DigitalOcean for sponsoring this channel. All right, so I hope you found this video useful showing you around Mission Control. I was really excited when I figured out Mission Control because it just made my life really easy here. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. We're also gonna have a ton of videos that we're gonna go through in this series. So if you haven't started watching this series yet, you're down two videos you've gotta go watch from the beginning explaining what the series is all about and the second video where we start exploring additional things. We're gonna do unboxings, we're gonna be doing upgrades. We're going to be talking about the important critical issues, the criticisms and the positives about Mac OS and the Apple ecosystem here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that little notification bell so you can stay up with the latest videos out there. And most importantly, remember to get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe.